Welcome to the tutorial video of Might & Magic 10 Legacy Modding Kit. With this guide we want to show you some components of the modding kit and how to work with it. First you need to install Unity Pro. The trial version is sufficient. Let us begin with how you can load the modding kit. First you need to check that you have a current version of Might & Magic 10 installed. You also need the current version of the modding kit installed. We recommend to copy it directly in the installation folder of the game. You can now launch Unity. First, open the modding kit Unity project. To do so, just double click on Open Other. Browse for the folder where you have installed the game and select the modding kit folder. The browser will then close. Unity takes a moment to check the project. After a short moment, the import of the modding kit assets will start. This process will last a few minutes. We are taking a little shortcut here, but you have to take a few minutes to import the modding kit assets. After the import, Unity Editor will show up. The startup screen provides you some general information about Unity, but let's skip that for the moment. We will start by loading the mod sample level. For that, browse the Scenes folder. You'll find a dungeon folder with a modified version of the Spider Lair dungeon. Each level is defined by two components. The first component is the level scene which contains the third environment. The second file is the grid data which contains the level logic. Open the level by double clicking on the scene file. Wait a few seconds for the screen to be loaded. This is a normal Unity scene which you can manage with all the Unity editor tools as you like. The most important components of the modding kit can be reached with Mayan Magic 10 Legacy Mod Main Menu Entry. You can find tools to create new scenes with grid data and minimap screenshots. You can also reach the Level Editor Tool tab. The last option is a checking tool for the current grid. Now I would like to show you how you can create your own game database with exclusive snapshots of the game data, dialogue, and localization files for your mod. Under Create tab, you find the Package Database entry. In your inspector, you will see the controls to create your own database. This database is created in the currently selected folder in your project view. Later, we will show you where you can configure your databases in order to link them to your mod. To add game logic to your scene, you should use the Level Editor. To do so, double-click on the Mod Main menu and select Open Level Editor. First, you need to check if the editor is using the right game database. After you have opened the Level Editor, select the Settings tab on the right. Click on Open to configure the path for the game data and then browse to your modding kit folder. There you need to browse through these folders until you reach the Static Data folder. Select this one. You can now start to explore the level editor and which elements are placed on the grid of the sample dungeon. For example, you can check which monsters are placed and modify them to your favorite creature. Now let's take a look at the level editor and the grid. The grid has different layers depending on their purposes. These layers can be reached thanks to the different tabs in the level editor. The first tab is the slot tab. Here you can place monsters and interactive objects on the grid. You can also add complex logic for riddles. We will come back to this tab later. The second tab will help you configure transitions between tiles. Here you can define for each tile in which direction players and monsters can move. Just click on the tile you want to modify and change the values in the level editor.
The other tabs contain the configuration of the terrain in general and the height of each towel if you wish to have ramps and stairs in your level. The last tab is the setting tabs where you can for example configure the color codes used for the grid overlay. Let's take a closer look to the triggers and commands. Triggers are components which react to things that are happening on the grid and are mostly triggered by the player. Triggers can be used for doors, monsters, containers, levers, and NPCs. Commands fill triggers with logic. Here's a cheat, for example. For example, with set data, you can define which prefab the chest is using. These prefabs you can use right away. The open container command allows the player to open the chest. The command can have many different types. For our chests, we would need some loot, so we are selecting set data and we can choose between gold, items, lore books, and tokens. For our selecting gold, know that the amount can be configured directly in the command. You can also explore the other tiles on the grid, for example monster selection, modify them as you wish. Now let's take a look at the mod info element. The modding kit contains a sample mod info. To open it, browse into the mod sample folder to find the file. After opening the mod info, you can configure it in your inspector. Here you can enter the name of your mod, your name, the version, the default language, which should be used, and also a description text. Here you can define which levels are part of your mod. Press add and add as many level scene files as you want. In this area you can configure which databases your mod uses. If the fields are left empty, the mod will use the files from the main game. You can also define the location to where your mod should be exported. The buttons below are used to trigger the export of your mod. In the Mod Config tab, you can configure many game settings. For example, you can configure how much time is spent for each step in the game. A very important value is the start map. Here you need to configure which level is loaded when your mod starts. Once you are finished with your mod, or when you want to test it, simply export it. To do so, open the mod info and press export. You can now take a look at your configured export location and you will see your exported mod. The game needs all the files in this exported folder. To 
play the mod, you need to copy the exported folder with its content into the mods folder of the game. This folder is located next to your Might and Magic 10 saves. To find it, go to your My Documents folder and double click on Might and Magic 10 Legacy. After the mod has been copied, you can start the game. Once you have launched the game, you'll reach the mod section by selecting Extras and then Mods. On this screen you will see all the mods that are in your mods folder. You can select one and take a closer look on the right side. Here you see the name, the author, the version, and also the description text of the mod. After you've pressed the load button, you will see a background image, if you have configured one, and a version number in the corner confirming that the mod is loaded. You can now go back to the main menu. Here you can start a new game with the mod or load a saved game which was created with the mod. When you create a new game, you will have the normal party creation process of Might and Magic 10 before jumping into the game. The mod follows the same rules than the main game, but with your created levels and databases. This way you can define new adventures and play them. Thanks for watching this tutorial video of Might and Magic 10 Legacy Modicum.